get from a deer tick that causes the now pandemic of Lyme disease. Mm. So you can see I'm driven to get this out there to save Absolutely. lives. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see the passion in it. And with that, I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to ask you about your routines. Because in growing a business, there's probably certain routines that you've developed, even personal routines that you developed. So will you tell me about some of the routines you have on a daily basis and which ones make the biggest impact in your life? I will. I, I saw in your bundle of questions that you might be asking me, you know, your favorite books and yeah. uh, Seven Habits, you know, Successful People by Stephen Covey. Okay. You know, having values, having balance in your life, Taking care of yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and getting that balance every day, making sure as far as a routine, I ask my clients, even if it's Sunday through Thursday, so they can play and stay up light, late and be nocturnal on the weekends on Friday <laughs> and Saturday night, yeah. is to do what they can to be asleep by 10 o'clock their time zone, so they're awake and best blessed and refreshed and they awake and refreshed and able to really feel like they're happy and excited to jump out of bed naturally without being shocked by an alarm clock. I want people to work it out so they can awaken naturally on their own biorhythm. And then getting um, my clients as well as for me, the way to be your quadruple your success like Evan Pagan who had a wake-up reductive program to help people go for their success as any kind of an expert is to take care of your body. Get your rest. Get your proper clean water and your good food and your workout and take care of you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually with taking care of what you really want in your life. Yeah. And that for me, is the foundation for happiness and success. Do what you love to do. Be authentically you. And take care of yourself spiritually, mentally, socially, emotionally, and physically every day. Perfect. Now tell me about some of the mentors you had. What did they do for you? How did they benefit you? Um, What did that do for you in your career? I would say my first Two mentors were my mom and my dad. They taught me how to play and how to work and integrity. And I loved giving and serving because I saw them doing and doing well. They were selfless Mm -hmm. in their way of giving and serving, but they always did everything with total integrity and honesty. And they knew how to laugh and make life joyous. They were my two most important mentors. I would say since I am a Christian, I follow the Bible, okay. and that was a favorite book. And a mentor would be um, the, the person that I followed. You know, the, the God of the New Testament and Old Testament, uh, Jesus Christ. And I saw that by allowing people to do and be who they are, and let them choose and be an example was the best mentoring I could get. Excellent. And I've also met Art Winkletter and see you at the top, and Dennis Wheatley and Zig Ziglar in the 70s. Um, The positivity and the power of the desire to design the destiny. It's really helped me a lot. Perfect. And you mentioned a couple of the books that you love, Stephen Covey's book, The Bible. Um, not, not that that's Stephen Covey's book. That, that sounded a little weird there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jonathan Livingston Steagall by Richard Bach. It means you can always go higher. Hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a process. Life is a process. Success in business is a process where you're open to learning and you can continue to evolve and go higher. That's perfect. I like that. What are some others? I like the book Think and Grow Rich. Okay. That was a good book. Um, It just... It 
tells you, I, I like what Henry Ford would say as well. He would say, if you think you're you're not successful and you say you are, if you think you're successful, you then you are. Yeah. Whatever, you know, as a man thinketh, so is he. And I want to tell you about another mentor very quickly because I have a dream. I know that globally, economically, um, the challenge is because mainly because of the health problem, the, the, the structures. And I met someone who is personally for me an example. And as far as a global awareness, he was an example. And he was literally under Lee Iacocca right there. And he worked with every president's cabinet since Eisenhower. Mm. His name was Don Hilty. 1986, I saw the way he treated people. The man grew up as a member of the Amish, even though he was a very wealthy aristocrat. His family owned the, they actually donated to the Swiss government in Switzerland, the Hilti Castle. It came from a very wealthy aristocratic family, but he was raised by Amish. Mm. And he was the most polite, most gentle, most sensitive and accommodating person I've ever met. I've never met anyone more refined, yet he was an expert as a global economist Hmm. and a consultant, as I said, in every president's cabinet since Eisenhower, and a consultant to Don Hilty. I mean, Don Hilty, I'm sorry, a consultant. Don Hilty was a consultant to Lee Iacocca. Another one was Henry Mixum, a CFO for Ernst & Young, and he helped me get a huge perspective on the value of what I have and who I am and what my program does. Believed in me so much that he had his $80 accountants go through my business and tell me, you know, way undercharging. If you want to make a small profit, not run this like a charity, that each of your trainers should be getting, you should be getting $3,000 for a month of training for clients. You yourself should never charge less than 15000 a week for what you know and what you have. Yeah. And that was 1988. He and helped me understand. He said, you have not only given me, because he was in love with golf, total fitness and pre-golf conditioning for me and my passion for golf, but it's like your $150,000 worth of plastic surgery all over the face of the body without going under the risk with, you know, with the risk of um, anesthesia mm. going totally under and the risk of the knife and the expense and all the downtime, you give people that kind of a benefit. He said, if you sell your personal training, you you, with a one-on-one, for under $15,000 a week, you're undervaluing yourself. Wow. So he was really an eye-opening person for me. He went from CFO for Ernst & Young to working in Dallas with gas and oil companies. We stayed in touch for quite a while. But he really helped me understand a perspective of business and corporations. And now I really know from what I've seen with my thousands of clients and benefits, this can turn around not only a a personal income for someone, they're totally going to turn around their ability to make the kind of money they need to make to have the life they want when they follow my program. Yeah. But it's also could turn around Fortune 1000 companies or even, you know, small businesses because you don't have a lack of productivity. The workman's comp problem, you know, with someone becoming disabled or hurting themselves, this will prevent injury plus it expedites like sports medicine physical therapy, then getting back on the job. Perfect. Zena, tell me about some of the beliefs you hold about yourself and your business, your ability. 